and uh, good morning for our friends that are joining us from uh, from America. You are all welcome. Let us pray. Let's pray, please. I know that's with you. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity for us to meet with you, meet at your feet, O oh Lord. Thank you for protecting us in our various places throughout the week. We pray, O oh Lord, that you be our teacher again, be with our teacher. Uh, grant him good utterance, O oh Lord, so that he will teach us right from your words, from your minds. Bless your truth in our hearts. Lord, we pray, O Lord, that you bring our brethren that are not here now, bring them along and bless them too. Bless everyone that will watch the program later on, O Lord, to the glory and honor of your holy name. Our brethren that cannot join us today, we pray, O Lord, that you bless them as they, as they watch the program, as they learn about you. Thank you, dear Lord. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, again, uh, yes, uh, brother, a uh, revolution. To, uh. Yes. Make, try and make sure the, the phone is very close to your mouth today. The, the last one, uh, the audio wasn't good enough. So even after I produced it, it could not be published. Okay. Let the thing be closer so that it will be clear. Okay. Yes. You are welcome. Thank you. All right. We are going to continue. A study of the book of Jude. Do we are going to round up the book of Jude today? So I'm going to read through the book of Jude once again. Jude has 100 and no, sorry, Jude have 25 verses. So let me read Jude. Only one chapter, 25 verses. Let me read through. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and called, mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith once, which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once know this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, after words destroyed them that believe not, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set Fought for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, go to these guilty dreamers, defile the flesh, despise dominion, speak evil of dignitaries. Yet, man killed the archangel when contending with the devil. He disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they Known naturally as good beasts, in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for a reward and perish in the gainsaying of Korah. These are sports in your feasts of charity, 
when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds, they are without water, carried about of wings, trees, with fruit, wither, withered, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds who they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust and their mouth speaking great swelling words, having meant persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which we have spoken before of the Lord of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who will walk after their own ungodly lust. These are they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, but ye, building, be, but they beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to preserve you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. This is the reading I've read through. So I just want to highlight some points here. Remember, this book of Jude is being written. It's addressing those who are in the family of Christ. Those who are sanctified, they are set apart, apart by God the Father, preserved in Jesus Christ and called. I mean, you know, reaching out to those who are in the family of Christ. And somebody cannot be in the family of Christ except the person be born again. Really born again, the person is born again. You are now born into the family of Christ. So all these ones that are born in the family of Christ, we are now exalted. The same. The, the main theme of this book is actually in verse 3, when he said, these ones said, let them come to all of us that are in the family of Christ. All those that have come to the family of Christ should earnestly, earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. Earnestly contend. Once delivered means it's not going to be delivered again. It's already there. It's out there. The word of God, as we see, especially as written, we see it in the New Testament. These are the minds of God written. The word of God, they are the mind, the thoughts of God, a written word. And these thoughts of God, no one can know them except the Spirit of God interpret them. So all scripture, the Bible said, is their God breath. So these are the minds of God written for us. So we contend for the faith. The faith these are the doctrines, the building block of our Christian belief. Let us look for it. The true original faith of Christ, the true faith is there. Every generation, every generation, God never brings new things. What? It's already written, it's already settled. So we said we should contend, look, look for a search for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Why? Because it said that there are people crept in for, for people have crept in on our years. People that are already said they were ordained for condemnation. Ungodly men, what do they do? They turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. The grace of God into lasciviousness, lewdness into lasciviousness. Even the line, the Lord God that they bring about them, the grace of God. So briefly, I want to talk a little bit about the grace of, of, of God here. For we to really understand why the grace, what the grace does, the meaning of this, this grace of God, and what why the grace of God. Now, in the, in the very beginning, God created man. When he created Adam, he created Adam perfect. Adam knew the laws of God that are written in his heart, he knew what to do. He was obeying God naturally, doing the will of God naturally. He created perfect until he was not deceived, though purposely he disobeyed God because of what the wife told him. We all know that story. He disobeyed God. So when he disobeyed God, he was cut off from the life of God. 
So he disobeyed God. He now obeyed the devil. He became a slave to the, the, the devil. So the devil became his master. So all, if you buy a slave, everything that the, the slave, uh, if you buy somebody, become a slave. Any person that anybody, because in those days that they used to buy slaves, the person, both his assets and his liabilities, everything is now yours. So Adam and all his offspring belong now to the devil. Belong now to the devil. So man departed from the true ways God has said before him and started to plunge into sin. That the sin started to multiply then sin until the time of Abraham. Abraham, God called Abraham. And Abraham, God says a friend of God, he walked by faith. And God now promised him what he's going to do that through his seed. Through his seed. He's going to do so. I'm going to bless the whole wide world. He through his seed. A person is, is referring to his actual our master, Jesus Christ. So, you know, Abraham now gave out to children until Israel was born and became a nation. God now decided to reveal his mind. To this, to the to the children of Israel, pending when his, his real um, purpose of creating man is going to be revealed again through our Master Jesus Christ. So the law came into play. The law, God now told Moses about the law. What is going to write down this this law? The law itself is good. What is the purpose of the law? The purpose of the law. It's even written in first, I read last time, let's go, first Timothy, first Timothy chapter one, verse five. He said, now the end of the commandment, that the purpose of the law, is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith on faith. This is the purpose, charity out of a pure heart, a good conscience. Love, charity is love. Out of a pure heart. People should live in love. No, love is the fulfillment of the law. All the law, what is it pointing out? Let men have a pure heart, a good conscience towards one another. One should not be suspecting the other one. Over. A good conscience towards God, towards one another. And love, love covered in multitude of sin. Love is the fulfillment of law. That was the purpose of the law. That was the purpose of the law. But because of the flesh, sin that is living in the flesh, man, that purpose could not be accomplished. It's just like somebody wishing to buy a particular thing or wishing to send their children to school, but no money to send them to school. No money. They said, in particular, um, the man want to do this. The people, the law, there's something in God's mind that God wants to achieve. But because of the flesh, this, that purpose could no longer be achieved in man. Therefore, God now says, when you, you now send Jesus Christ to come, as it's written in Romans, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, from 3, said, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin on the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So Jesus Christ came. Man, sin is already in the flesh. So when the law came, the law, when the, the, um, the law and, um, and has then arrived, now, man, there is sin, is sin in the world, but you cannot punish somebody, there is no law. So when the law came, the law should have brought the good intent of God to man. But sin now hijacked that purpose and killed man. Killed man. So when you say, look, do good to this, but do, do, do not covet the body, sin living in the body. Now, start, instead of meeting up that purpose, he started to, you know, he, he, he revived sin. Man started to covet. Man started to hate. All that the Lord said he should not do. Sin in the flesh. Revive these ones in man. So how can man really uh, uh, actualize what God has in mind? The body, the flesh was the problem. That's why Jesus Christ came. So Jesus Christ came still in this body. Although that corrupts nature from Adam was it in him was he was born sinless so Jesus Christ came having this body he combined said he condemned sin in the flesh so that we too we can now live as he did putting on this body he lives sinless throughout still having this he lives sinless so what God intended for the Lord to do 
The purpose was fulfilled in Christ. Christ is the fulfillment of the law. Why did he do so? He answered that now anyone that believes in him too can become like him, can be perfect, despite things all around. He can be perfect and really live out the purpose why God made it. So Jesus Christ opened the door for us. So that as in Adam, the first Adam, all that in Adam died, anyone that now in Jesus Christ shall live. So how are we going to live? How are we going to live? It is by grace. But say, by grace, we are saved through faith, by grace. So Jesus Christ now gave us grace. Grace is that ability to do that which, that which naturally we cannot do. To live out, do the commandments of God. So that's why God gave us grace. Let me read this portion again about this grace. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 21. Romans 5. That as sin had reigned unto death, even so, my grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin has reigned. Now, it's grace reigns through righteousness. Grace reigns through righteousness. So when we say you have grace, Produce the fruit of righteousness. That is it. The grace. So now your ability now live a holy life. I to live a sinless. I to live the life that Jesus Christ lived right here on it. How he walked. That is why he gave us grace. We now have the ability to live that life. It's possible. So somebody is saying that God has given us grace. Maybe you have grace. You are now licensed. Just in false features. You are now licensed. So do whatever thing you want to still continue with sin. That is an abuse of the grace. What is the reason of the grace? That we will reign. We're now able to live out what God requires us to live. We are no longer bound. We are no longer limited. We have the ability to do what God commands. The commandment of God are no longer body soul. Even at that same Romans chapter 5, verse 17 said, If for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which received abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness true shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Reign in life. God, the life we, we, we're talking about, life of joy, life of peace. This is what the law actually wants to achieve in man, which it cannot because of the presence of, of uh, sin in the flesh. But Jesus Christ achieved this one. So he said, anybody that is in him, we have that as giving grace, ability to live by this, we shall reign in life. That is how their, uh, our, our brothers in the church, and church in Syria, that's how they live. They look at their life. When the uh, apostles came, Barnabas and so when the, when Barnabas was sent to visit the church, when he saw when he saw the grace of God, he was glad. These people are now living the life that he expected of them. Titus chapter two. Titus chapter two. Purpose of this grace. Titus chapter two. From eleven, he said. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. What is he doing? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. In this present world. Ability not to live out what the law could not do. What the natural man could not do. He said, oh, it's not possible for somebody putting on this body to live a life of a sinless life. People say it's not possible, but it is possible. That is what Jesus Christ came to do. That's what he came to achieve and said, we, we are going to live by faith. And he has given us grace to do this, that in this present world, we should live righteously, godly. Grace, grace reigns in righteousness. So when you see a person, this person having grace, look at his life. Is he really living a righteous life? Grace, reign in righteousness. You might live righteous and godly in this present world, this present world, looking for that blessed hope and glow and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a, pe a, a peculiar people, zealous of good works, a peculiar people. Zealous of good works. 
These people are now no, don't have desire to live in sin anymore. They're zealous of pleasing good, zealous of good works. The more from all he has done that. So he has given us grace to live above sin. Let's see again what he, he said here in Romans chapter 6. So godly men have entered, telling people that you are giving grace so you cannot live anyhow you like. It's not true. Grace was given that we reign in life. We, we, we reign, we live. The life we are talking about is the life of peace, life of joy, life of love, life of purity, life of righteousness. For grace reigns in righteousness. Romans chapter 6. I read from 1 to 14. What shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Ye no, no, ye not that. So many of us, as we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we are baptized into his death. Therefore, we, we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be planted in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, died no more. Dead had no more dominion over, uh, no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he lived, he lived unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus, Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in its loss thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those who are alive from the dead and you are members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So before, when, before Jesus Christ came, even those who have intention to do good, because of sin, they, they could not, their good intention could not be achieved. Sin still had dominion over them. But Jesus Christ came to solve this puzzle. Therefore, I said that we that are him, let us reckon ourselves. For anyone that is born again, he has died with Christ and resurrected. It is a work of faith. Therefore, if the person has died and resurrected and now living in Christ, sin has no more dominion over the person. To the requirement of grace, why the reason why God gave us this grace is to grow to a perfect man grow unto the stature of the fullness of Christ. All the commandments of God are pointing to one direction, that we no longer be babies. We grow to a perfect man. There are some people that are used to ask all the things, to giving in the church of Christ, that, ah, ah, is it that if somebody has been saved, or just somebody has come into the family of Christ, it means that it's over, it can now, we see it final. Actually, it's not actually like that. When God, I want to, Oh, explain this a little bit. When God calls, I said many are called, but few are chosen. God calls all. The message of God goes to all. Many come in in the body of Christ. The word of God says, anyone that come in, God will by no means cast away. So many come. Some come with good intention. Some come with bad All that are coming, no one, for now, no one God will chase away. Some come in. And learn the, the language of the church. They learn the management. They have, they have the but they have a form of God. It's not that inwardly they have been transformed. They don't have the life of God flowing in them. Yeah, they just learn. These ones are the people that the Jews say they are creating unawares. These ones say, ah, it's not possible. They deny the power of God. They have the power of God, the word of God, that it is possible that even having put it on the body, somebody can live a life pleasant to God. They deny it. They say it's not possible. Because the life of God is not flowing in them. So many come in, many come in. But how will you know them? The Bible said, by the fruit you shall know them. Those who are of God, 
we surely show that they are belong to God, those who are of God. One of the uh, differences, how you are going to know the true children of God and those who don't children of God is even written in the scriptures. Let me read. First of all, the children of God manifest righteousness. That is the grace they receive is to live right. Life they manifest. Let's, I want to read John, first John chapter 3. One to ten. First John. I will read from NLT. First John chapter three. One to ten. Let me read. See how very much our Father loves us, for He calls us His children, and that is what we are. But people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know Him. Dear friends, we are already God's children, but. He has not yet shown us what we will be will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. Three, and all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure, just as he is pure. Four, everyone who sins is breaking God's law, for all, all sin is contrary to the law of God. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins. And there is no sin in him. Everyone who continues to live in him will not sin. But anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you because uh, about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil. Who has been sinning from the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning. Do not make a practice of sin because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. Ten. So now we can tell who are children of God. And who are children of the devil? Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. See the easy. Anyone who does not do righteousness, does not live righteously, does not belong to God. So, this is the clear manifestation. The grace is given to us. That we can now live the life of God. We continue to live a righteous life. So somebody said it's in the house of God. Then he never had the appetite, never had the desire to do what God wants. Actually, that person is, doesn't belong to God. For those who belong to God, even you'll be ashamed of the evil thing they have done. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verse 6. Romans chapter 9, verse 6. He said, but it is not that, okay, Romans chapter 9, verse 6. But it is not that the word of God has taken no effect. For they are not all Israel who are Israel. Not everyone that come to the family of God, that truly belong to God. Not all. For all who come to belong to God, God, by his word, he defines how they, are, they will live. They are not everyone that is, it seems to come now. Physically, people gather. Of course, the building is not the church. Our building, our body is the temple of God. So when people gather in a congregation, everyone there will not belong to God. God knows who are his. And God defines those who are his. These are how they are going to live their life. They are not going to lie. They are not, they are, they are not to lie. Love committing sin. No. Romans chapter 6. From 20. Romans chapter 6 from 20. 20 to 22 said, For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? Anyone that is born, you really come to the Christ. Those evil things that you do, you'll be ashamed of them. You will never come and say, oh, it's grace, now continue. The purpose of grace is to now live that righteous life that we were not able to live before because of the limitation we have of the flesh. 
now we live by faith. We live by the Spirit of God. So he said, those, those things, the evil things that we used to do before, when you remember, you'll be ashamed of them. These are the mark. So if somebody delights, that is why God said that anyone that is born of him will not continue living an evil life, life of sin. Will not. Why? God said his nature is in him. Our nature now is pleasing God. We have a nature panting to do the will of God. The grace now is it given to us that we live out what we desire, we can now achieve. God said, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. So those things, evil things, you'll be ashamed of them. But where we read in Jude, the people are not ashamed of, of evil. They go about, they, what they, what they, find, they, they, they are like sports in the face of charity. They are problem. They are sports. They are, they bring reproach to the name of Christ. They are not actually belong, they don't actually belong to God. So he said, if they belong to God and they take a rain, they'll be ashamed of the evil things they practice. Just like Paul is writing to the Romans here. He said, I read again in 21. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now, now that you are, you are now ashamed? Why? You have the nature of Christ now, ashamed for the end of those things is dead. 22. But now, having been set free from sin and become slaves of God, ye have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. Everlasting life. Jude chapter, Jude verse uh, four, who think about these people abusing the grace of God. Teaching people that the grace, when you come, look, oh, you're, you're okay with you. They don't know what God is saying. And not everyone that is gathered in the congregation, because you are gathered in the congregation, calling up forth. God will say, well, anyone that call upon the name of the Lord shall be will come in. But Jesus Christ is coming to rapture church with us put or wrinkle. Paul said that labor, so that we present everyone perfect. He's not coming to rapture babies in the Lord. No, he's coming to rapture people. Take people to himself who have grown to maturity. Therefore, he said that we all grow to a perfect man. The man who grow to the fullness of the stature of Christ. We grow. We grow. We grow up. He's not coming to take babies. So you go to take up people that have given ability, the grace is that, that ability to now live the life of Christ that he lived here on earth, still having this body, putting on this body, as he overcame. So everybody that is born of him will live such. Grace is given to us. This is the reason that grace is given. So, one, I said, many people that are in God, not everyone that, even if what I was saying, not all that call him Lord, Lord, will, uh, and, uh, will, will you know, uh, enter the kingdom of God. You know, yeah. All the coming Lord, Lord, Lord is actually uh, his real children. But those who do his will, do 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 his will. So if you are you come, if you are really saved by Christ, if truly you are born, you have given your soul to God, you have the nature of God in you. Surely this man, this trace will be seen in the person. If this trace is not seen in this person, and the person is not actually having the life of God, for God Himself said, anyone that has his life in him cannot, will not. Not possible for him to continue in sin because of the nature of God in him now. If not love righteousness, not love to grow. God said so. So, but there are people. Let us read First uh, John chapter two verse nineteen. So, for we to also to know the people that truly belong to God, they will continue. You come to the, the body of Christ. You come to the body of Christ, and you don't continue in him. Then it's a one that manifestation of that that the person actually doesn't belong to God. First John. Chapter 2, verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that, that, none, uh, that none of them were of us. They went out from us. They could not continue the sound teaching because the nature of God was not in them. Other people that look at them, they might think, oh, these people are almost once a Christian, but actually God said, his sheep will follow him. His sheep will continue. And he said, one thing you are, the people are going to know his sheep, that this sheep will continue with him. If the person doesn't continue in his teaching, it doesn't belong to God at all. Therefore, if we say, I say, I belong to God, let me walk out. They just love the seed of God will be 
loving God, doing his command. commandments no longer brought strange. Commandments is not my natural environment. His command is not my desire. And has given me ability to love them and to do his will. His will is done for Christ said, I am glorified in them. Talking about those who are truly his own. So, these people mentioned here, they we are worth following. They are in a congregation of the true children of God, but they cannot endure the sound dog because the purpose was that they were speaking the truth. Since they cannot endure, they say, ah, oh, this is a hard saying. Just like they said in the, the time of Jesus Christ, who can endure it? They went out. What is, when they went out, did, what do they do? Do they preach or, uh, go about on that business? No. Many of them continue to now preach a perverted, fake, false doctrine. Why? To gain money. They now took it as a business enterprise. Just to defraud people in the name, using the name of the Lord to defraud people. Therefore, the people, the name of God is being blasphemed because of the Indiana lifestyle. They never believe that it is possible to live a lifestyle that is pleasant to God, even putting on the but they never believe so. They deny the power of God. They have a form of godliness, deny the power of God. They deny the power. So this mention in so somebody that come to the family of Christ, God will not drive this person away. But to know that this person truly has is born again, to have the life of God flowing in him. Jesus Christ himself said it. The person will continue. I read again. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, 31 and 32. John chapter 8. Thirty-one said, then Jesus said to those Jews who believe him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I love the way that King James, uh, King James put it, John chapter 8, 31. Said, and Jesus, then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, if you continue in my world, continuity, then are ye my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Continue, if you continue in my teachings, in the sound doctrine, not just coming to church, they won't say the same. No. If you truly belong to Jesus Christ, you are still truly, you know, you belong to Jesus Christ. You are born again and the life of God flowing, then you are going to continue. For our master that cannot lie said by himself again in John chapter 8, in John chapter 10, rather, John chapter 10 from 26. John 10, 26. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Imagine the people that are gathered, the Jews. Some of them said, they are not a sheep. Now he said, my sheep, hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. So these are the set of people that actually, they refer to those that are saved, are actually one. See, these are the people that truly manifest as children of God. These ones, by their lifestyle, they are really saved indeed. He, he says that. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. These are things they are continuing. No pos it's not possible. They are saved. They are preserved in Christ. Because they are, con they are following him. Hold on. They are not forced. As they are following him, their lives are transformed. By the looking you know, the, through a mirror, through the word of God, we look at the word of God. We are transformed to be like him from glory to glory. These are the people that at last, when you look at them, you have time perfect before God. These are the, see, God, Jesus Christ said that he gives these ones eternal life. Nobody shall pluck them. They are secure in his hands. To, to 29, my father which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father, are one. I and my father are one. This is it. So, anyone that saved, if you say you are saved, truly saved, can you prove yourself? How? 
you won, the love of Christ will be there. You will continue. How ah, you are saved, you, you have received grace to reign in this life. Reign. Reign. Live a life that God has prescribed. For one thing, we are here, we are a new creation. Anyone that is creating a new creation, all things are passing away. Let me say that we are, not, we are created to do the works God has before ordained for we to do, which the law could not achieve. The Lord's purpose is that the, the Lord could not achieve it because of the limitation of the flesh. Now, Jesus Christ has come and given us a solution. So he said that we will walk by faith. He has given us that grace. As we are born again, we believe in him. We have that ability now to start to grow to a perfect man. Grow to a perfect man. These are the people. As the Bible said, the purpose of having we cleave unto the Lord, and we continue with him, it's not possible for anybody any power to snatch us. What can separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing is possible anymore to snatch us from the love of Christ. So this is area I really want to talk about before I talk about the uh, rebellion of Korea and we conclude for today. Grace. Ungodly men, they are beauty. They don't know what the grace of God is meant to achieve. Grace of God came that we achieve. That which naturally we could not have been able to achieve. Because of the limitation, because of sin in the flesh, God now said, you are giving, you are giving grace. Grace reigns in righteousness. Since you have grace, come on, my son, be wise and make my heart glad. That I will answer him that reproaches me. Make my heart glad. That's what the word of God says, that we make him glad. When other people are like, it's not possible to put on this body and live a life that is pleasant to God. They live the type of life Jesus Christ lived when he walked here in Montreal, when put he was walking on earth. He said it is possible. For that spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the grave is in us. And by his power, giving us grace to live that lifestyle. It is possible. Men that have gone before us, the early century, apostles, the disciples, they live that life. And God is counting on us also to make him happy. So they find out how we live that life by the doctor, by this teaching that the Holy Spirit is revealing. First of all, we believe that it's possible that grace is given to us to make our master happy, to live a life. He has prescribed for us. What's the life? Life of joy. Say the kingdom of God, righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Love is the bond of perfectness. So, having now, let's go back to Jude again. Jude, verse. 11, he said, woe unto them. They have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for a reward and uh, perish in the gain saying of Korah. I mentioned before, other verses mentioned here. We, these are what these men, these three people manifested all through, how they are. Down, down, down. The Mamoras complained at this. All is what these people manifested. Uh, last week, I talked about Cain. Cain own what is his own problem? In some cases, he has a bitter heart. He doesn't have love. He hates his brother and killed him. And I read, we read through First John chapter 3 and chapter 4. Anyone that says he loves God and hates his brother is, is he lying. Anyone that hates his brother is a murderer. Cain hates his brother. He's a murderer. And he killed his brother. So God gave us a new command. What's the commandment he gave? He said, a new commandment I give to you that we love one another as he loved us. Not as we love ourselves now. The, as he loved us. How did he love? He laid down his life for us. Love. When we, we love one another, so we don't need somebody. The laws, the commandment actually, the laws are not made, made for the righteous. We don't need somebody to come and write it or bring a catalog of laws for we to do what God, God wants. No. Love is that height of perfection. Love, love. So Cain didn't show love at all. Coming to Balaam, Balaam is a covetous person. He's a false prophet. He's a false prophet. He give him money, he do anything. There are some people that to even to pray for somebody, they will try. Say, now in our time, they have gone around greedily, like Balaam. For so. Doing that, the manifest of God's prophet. God, Jesus Christ clearly said, Philly I have given to you, Philly you give. But this one, they said, look, the, anything uh, they, uh, we are going to gain, 
in Christ, he said that you pay money. They abuse the grace of God. So the kingdom of God, the word of God now, is not for the rich. It's not for the poor anymore. These are the people that do so. They are like Balaam. Anybody that preaches the gospel because of money is actually doing the work of Balaam. And Bible refers, this Balaam is a false prophet. It's a soothsayer. What I've got called it is a soothsayer. So they have run greedy. They don't have the spirit of God. They don't know what. They don't have the passion for souls. They don't have passion, love at all. To, to minister, they go, okay, what's the size of your congregation? If you say my congregation is five, so no, 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 I am bigger than that. These are this type of people. These are the type of people. Two. I said today, I'm going to talk about Kora. The next person says Kora, the gain sin of Kora, rebellion of Kora. They have go they and they have perished in the gain sin of Kora, rebellion of Kora. This thing is rebellion. Now, in the life of Kora, we see, uh, we see, uh, when we, we, we read the scriptures, I have to read rather, First Corinthians chapter 10. Korah is a Levite, a Levite that came up and uh, opposed Moses. He was not content with his position being a Levite. He was angry that maybe uh, Moses' family, Aaron, Moses' brother, became a priest. So they converted the priesthood also. So he came up, not regarding what uh, Moses says. He said he too is somebody great, just like the Otifis in Third John. He never regarded the words of Moses anymore. That he wanted to get the word of Moses anymore. So he rebelled against the word of Moses. Anything Moses we, we speak, no, no, no. He said he too is somebody special. So why should Moses, people listen to Moses? He came up, he rebelled, and he was destroyed. How? Know the story, the ground opened up and swallowed him and his company. Many of his followers, all their work, they are destroyed. So, look at the warning. I want to read, I know I said, read in First Corinthians chapter 1. Give us the picture, and it's giving us warning. First Corinthians chapter, okay, First Corinthians. Okay, let's go to chapter 10, rather, chapter 10 from 1. First Corinthians chapter 10 from 1. He said, 1 to 13. Moreover, brethren, I will not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers we are under the cloud and all passed through the sea and we are all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all did eat the same spiritual meat and did all uh, and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, these things we are, are examples. To the intent, we should not lose our evil things, as they also lost said. Neither be ye idolaters, as they were, as we are some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand remember the advice of balaam balaam advised the people about the king of balak to make lure the children of israel to commit from fornication so that god himself will kill them and that's what actually transpired here nine neither let us tempt christ as some of them also tempted and we are destroyed of serpents neither more more as some of them more more like Kora, yeah, he murmured. This work is murmuring. Murmur, does not satisfied with God. He stated authority. How God wants his church to be wrong. He's not, he doesn't like it at all. He wants to be seen as a guy. He wants everybody to bow to him. To Kora, he's not satisfied. He said, they will murmur. Neither murmur as, as some of them also murmured, and we are destroyed by the destroyer. Now, all these things happen unto them. For example, and they are uh, written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. We are for, let him think it, he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. There have no temptation taking you, 
but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear, bear it. Two. Kora. He rebelled. He murmured. He murmured. The group of company, people that accompany him, his friends, his family, all of the other Levites standing against Moses. I'm not saying now that if a leader or somebody that is a leader in the church of Christ is doing wrong, we should support him. No, not at all. We are to support what Christ said, even though it means by laying down our life. We support, we defend the gospel. I'll give us an example in uh, Galatians chapter 2. Galatians. Galatians chapter 2, from 11 to 14. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that Satan came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them, which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled themselves with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with the dissimulation. But when I saw that they walk not according to the truth of the gospel, people of God notice this. When Peter himself, when he saw, Paul saw that Peter is so walking according to the truth of the gospel. He said that, I said unto him, he had to stand to defend the gospel. He's not attacking the person of Peter, he's defending the gospel. He's not disrespecting Peter. But when somebody called himself, no matter how great work he has done in the past, they don't watch him. And now school, leading people astray, we need to stand to defend the truth. He said, yeah, when it's not working according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, before them all, there are certain corrections that you correct, there are certain corrections that need to be corrected publicly so that many people will not be carried away. And thank God, Peter, if the person that the pastor or the preacher that is corrected in love, that we're not demeaning people, you know, running that image of the person. No, we are talking about the gospel of Christ here. If person deviates and not standing with you, we are to speak publicly. If the person is a person that truly loves God, the person will adjust. We say, oh, I'm sorry. He will adjust. For Peter, later, he was writing to the people, concerning Paul, according to the grace given to him. He mentioned in wise and beloved brother Paul. He, he knew that he was wrong. He's humble. For God resists the proud and given grace to the humble. So he said again, and I continue to read in verse 14. I said, I said unto Peter, before them all, if thou being a Jew, livest after the manner of, of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compelest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? He's defending the gospel. Time to defend the gospel, we should not keep quiet. Because of this person, he's a very, very, very great man. People know him to be a great man. If he's not working according to the truth of the gospel, we should stand for this truth. Peter himself said, it's better to obey God than man. Let's look up now. That same um, Galatians. I'll read. Four. To five. Said, and that because of false brethren, on our we has brought in who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Many people use now many things. They say that before, in the name of Jesus Christ, can only God, only God said, he gave us a name. Only in the name of Jesus Christ. When we pray, our prayers are answered. Only in his name that we are saved. Somebody, when people will come with different, different say, material prayer. Ah! Bringing people back to bondage, we should stand for the truth. We should allow the, in our own generation the gospel of, of, of Christ to be brought to the world. Thank God, God has raised people, and every generation of God raised a voice, a voices that we stand for Him. Here He said, Five, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, 
not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. That's the purpose. It's not that it's attacking the pregnant people. No, let the truth of the gospel continue. Uh, although there are some people that do make mistakes out of not understanding actually the perfect ways of God. These ones, let me give an example, Apollos, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 18. Acts of the Apostles chapter 18. Verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born of Alexandria, an eloquent man, an authority in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. This man is not having a perfect knowledge of the, of the ways of God, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when Aquila and Priscilla had had, they took him unto them and expanded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Of course, Apollos is not a, a false prophet. No, you cannot classify to a false, false uh, prophet. Not at all. Only he has never known. But John uh, thought about Jesus Christ. Somebody that's going to come. That's going to show the, the ways of God more perfectly. Somebody is going to come. That's, He's going to baptize the Holy Ghost and we fire. Somebody is going to be mentioned a lot. This is the problem that they will prepare. When the priest person comes, whatever thing the person tells them, let them obey. Just like Moses to prophesy that a prophet God is going to raise. Like unto him, whatever thing this prophet tells do it. This is John the Baptist preparing the people for the Messiah. And uh, Apollos never knew that the Messiah has already come. So she's still preaching the people. Let the people prove the baptism of John. The teaching of John, that's what he knew. And even this one, we're talking about repentance. But when you look at the, the man, they ask, oh, this man, this type is not one that is too, well, the people is preaching to the church. They, all of them, they already knew. But Paul has been, they already knew, knew the ways of God. They already knew. So he said, this man, oh, he has a good heart too. He has a good boot, but he never knew that this thing that he's teaching, he has already been fulfilled. So they called him aside. And he was so humble. The wisdom of God, the faith of God, the pure and one easy to entreat. Anyone that said I've grown, I cannot receive any correction again. When the person actually erring, that person is manifesting that is not actually belong to God. See, Peter was corrected by very Paul that came so many years later. Received instruction. So here he said, the, the Priscilla and Aquila taught Apollos. Look at it. Look at it. What you're saying, this one has already happened. They now really opened the scriptures for him. Since a humble man, he received it. Now 27. And when he had disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come, heard them much, which had believed through grace. Believed through grace. 29, 28. And he said, for he mentally convinced the Jews, and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was a Christ. By scriptures is very important. The doctrine of God is not by the dream, say you dream, you dream this thing. So we want to teach the grace of dream, talk to the grace of prophecy. No, by the scriptures. The scriptures written here in the mind of God, written by the scriptures, and truly Jesus is the Christ. See, so this is how preachers should be. And preacher that truly belong to God. So I go back again to Jude. I see a few things here and we round up. Jude. So the way of Korah is rebellion. Rebel. They rebel. They rebel. They don't listen. They don't receive advice from teachers. They don't receive advice at all. We are to honor those who are leaders in the church. Even we are to honor them. How? How do we honor them? We are going to look at their lifestyle, the pattern of their lifestyle, their body language. Where is it going? Where is it going? If the pattern of their lifestyle is leading to error, we are not going to follow them. But we said, man, those who are, are laboring in word and doctrine, that's these people should be honored. First Timothy, uh, First Thessalonians, read uh, First Thessalonians, chapter five, 
from 12. And, and Thessalonians chapter 5 from 12 to uh, 13. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among you. For work's sake, highly, highly. God never said that they should be as Lord. No, the elders in our midst, those who labor in the world and esteem them very easy commandment of God. And let us add this scripture again. Hebrews chapter 13. How we read chapter 13, verse 7. He said, remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow constantly the end of their conversation. How? Look at their life. Where is he pointing to? Are they raising themselves over the Lord's heritage? Or they really starting to defend the, the truth? Follow. We watch the end. Their body language. Just the, the how? What are they pointing to? What they do they want to achieve? Are they pending, preaching because of filthy lucre? We watch. We watch. Those who labor in good doctrine, laboring to see that our master is honored. This one, Bible says, we esteem them. I will rule them. Don't say that we, we, we worship them. No. But we honor them. The other in third John. Never. The words of the apostle say, let's go there. Third John. Just read. Third John. Only one chapter. Now, nine said, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loved to have the preeminence among them, received us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren. He, and Forbidden them that would and cast them out of the church. 11. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil has not seen God. For this man to control the time, he rises up to be able to dismiss, expel people from the church, which means he's somebody that has grown to a particular height that people look up to. The person can knew this person was bold enough to even stand against the apostles of Jesus Christ, the real apostles, John, which means he has got a mighty following. But Bible, the, John is saying this one is of the evil person. He that do it, uh, this, doing this is of the evil one. Imagine how high he has rose, uh, or, or, the position he is, Diotrephes. It's like Cora. It's like Cora. So we should be watchful, watchful, watchful. Very attentive to what the Spirit of God is saying. We should not be carried away by anyone that said he's so much highly placed, so he can, he's infallible. No, 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 no. Paul too said, as he's preaching, he told Timothy that you to abide by the teaching, by so doing, you save your own self and those who are teaching. So, what we are teaching, we want to save ourselves and those who are teaching. So, this is it. So, there are people like that. They have grown to a particular high. They cannot, they don't want to listen to what God is saying. Is what they say, no, they have revelation, they have wisdom. We are that it's not written in the world. They now start to bring up faith, false doctrine. And these are the type that honor themselves. Jesus Christ said, say, those who honor themselves among themselves. Ah, uh, actually, they are not one. Let me let's read here. First Corinthians chapter 10. There are marks. It's first Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves by themselves, are not wise. Are not wise. John, again, John chapter 5. John chapter 5. From 41. 41 to 44. I receive not honor from men, Jesus Christ is saying, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his name, him ye will receive. 
How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? How can ye? How can ye believe? They seek. These people, they want honor. They call the organizing uh, competition in the churches. What? Bringing division. But where there is competition, competition, there is confusion in every evil work. Oh, the best singer, let us give them an award. What our, our master never says, he doesn't receive our honor from me. Where do they learn it from? Of course, strange doctrine. Let us honor, they, they include the world to honor our brother. We are, so we gave him a, a, a plate, a plate, whatever. This is the best, or the fastest growing church, the best singer, give them an award. What do you have that you are not giving? What of God says. They comparing themselves with this. I'm not why God said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in a bond of peace. We are there is this in this competition. What happened? The person that's going to be run out of, he will, he will not be happy. He, or somebody has never called at all for the for the honor to receive the reward, a, a prize. He will not be happy. So this type of practice brings division in the body of Christ. God said in Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verse 15. He said, and he, and he said unto them, Ye are they who justify yourself among men, but God knoweth your hearts. For they, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Abomination in the sight of God. Those that people are here, the world is uh, 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 applauding. Oh, this is the best, this is the best. And regarded to give, we should be careful. Our master never received honor from men. They will receive awards. Receiving, giving of awards is not the practice of the church. It's not written. Never see what that practice in the church, church at all. The true, true church. It's only true faith of Christ. He said, let us all labor. At the end, God will give to every means Christ that gives you our reward. Some person might even do a good work, but with a, a heart that is not perfect. People look at the, the, the heart. God looks at the heart. God said, we are all one body. Whatever thing that you see anybody is doing, doing best, is good. But said, hey, when you have done what you are supposed to do, say, you are unprofitable. You have, you have merely done what you are supposed to do. We should not look for reward from men. Jesus Christ never sought that. Rather, we look for the reward that comes from God only. So those who bring this, we should be careful. Even when we are called, come, come, come. We had that maybe our church is going to come, come and receive this reward. Or a particular group of people come up to give it We should not accept what our master rejected. He that does not gather to Jesus Christ is not of him. These are the manifestations of false preachers. They receive honor from men. They receive awards. And they are not seeking the honor that comes from God Almighty. That day, is that, there's a day that everyone is going to stand before Christ. Then God is going to reward every man according to his labor. So I will conclude saying what our master said here through my spirit said through Jude 20. If you read other one from 18, talking about the day, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their ungodly, of course, all these ones that the trees have mentioned let me, in passing. Then let me now conclude these. Be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. They don't have the spirit of God. So anyone not having the spirit of God, it doesn't belong to God at all. 20. But you, we, let us building, beloved, dear beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Let's build ourselves up with the words of righteousness. Let's build ourselves up to this perfect man that God he, he, he wants us to grow, to be. Let's build ourselves. We, what how do we build ourselves? With the word of righteousness. Paul told the people, I commend you to the word of, God, of, of his grace. He's able to make you strong. Go to build you up, make you strong, and give you an inheritance among them that are satisfied. We take the word of truth. He builds us with this sound doctrine. Building ourselves or praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God. We should not walk away. We should continue in the love of God. Keep yourself in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a difference. Have compassion. If you see a particular brother, a sister walking in a way, so we have compassion. We tell them, brother, this is the way we should, we should walk. 
if the brother really has the life of God in him, he's going to come forward. Jesus Christ said, I believe him. My sheep will hear my voice. They will follow me. They will not follow a stranger. They will not follow a stranger. Because the life of God is following him. The person will retract his steps. Now, and all that say with fear, pull, well, pulling them out of fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now, 12. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling. We are preserved in Christ. By what? He opposed everything by the word of his power. He's able to keep us going from falling. He's able. God is able. Jesus Christ said, you know his sheep. And if we, we are sheep, we should continue with him as we are continuing. Nobody is strong, is strong enough to snatch us out of, out of God, of the hands of God. So he said he's able to uphold us from falling. Now I want to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless, faultless, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, faultless. He's going to rapture each other with us for turning God. The word of, of God is the water that purifies, faultless. The grace is given to us. So grow up to become faultless. God said, be ye perfect. Even our father is going to be perfect. If it's not possible, God will never say so. Jesus Christ has made it possible because by grace we stand. His spirit is with us. He has given us this word. His word with us. He's encouraging us to go on to perfection. Living the elementary things of the daughter of God, let them march on to perfection. He want to present us faultless, faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. 25, to the only wise God, our Savior, the glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. So, even now it's written here, it's a prayer. And the Lord never speaks in a careless word. God knows his own. He said, I know my sheep, they will follow him. So those ones that are following him, those ones that are through his sheep, this one will continue with him. They will continue the truth. And as they're knowing the truth, they will be transformed to be like the master, which is truth. And at the end of, at the end, what happens? A glorious picture of Christ is formed in their lives. God wants to see his glorious picture formed in our lives. Therefore, he has given us grace to attain this. He's able to occult us from falling. I pray that the Lord God Almighty has given us his word and also given us his spirit to teach us all things. And he said, he's not going to teach us a lie. May he guide us into all truth and strengthen us that we never abuse the grace of God. But rather, by his grace, we live to make him happy. Even as it's written, my son be wise and make my heart glad. That I will answer him that reproaches. The Lord sent him every one of us in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.